That's nice. What's up guys, it's Rev J. We're still going through the box of old tools I found at my grandparents' cottage, and if you didn't watch part one on the egg beater drills and some of that stuff, go do so now. Otherwise, we're picking up where we left off, digging through the box, and seeing what we find. Now the next one, I didn't even know what it was when I pulled it out, and that is this guy right here. From what I understand, this is a Stanley depth gauge. Now it does say Stanley right on it, so that was pretty easy to identify. And it also says number zero. Now thankfully, Stanley's always been very good about numbering and itemizing a lot of their tools when you're doing research or rebuying. The problem being, when I researched a number zero, everything I got was a level. I could not find any depth gauges or anything like that on this, uh, on this Stanley number zero. So that left me a little confused. Now it's a six inch long piece and it's marked in 16th inch increments. It's got this wooden screw here on a stop and you loosen it up there is a pin, there it is, on this side here, little nail, let's see if you guys can see that there. Come on, there we go. Uh, and that allows you to basically hang this at zero wherever you want and adjust a depth gauge here, say five and a half inches, oh, wrong side there, there we go, five and a half inches, crank it down into place, and then you have a depth set, at five and a half inches automatically there. Uh, I'm guessing so you could like lay a board or, or fit something that way. Again, I've never used one of these. I'm not even entirely sure uh, what you'd be using it for. Is this a construction tool? It's definitely not an automotive tool. Now I did see something referring to one of these as a beach gauge. I'm not sure if that's because it's like beach wood. I have no idea. I don't know anything about wood at all. Uh, and I also don't know what beaching is. A quick uh, consult of the old Google didn't say anything. So again, if you guys have ever used one of these or know what they are, go ahead and post it in the comments below. Apparently, these go back all the way to the early 1900s. Uh, my guess is the way this is laid out and marked is probably not that old. Of course, the wood doesn't show that kind of age either, but it's definitely not new. As for an age on this thing, well, based on them being my grandpa's, my best guess was probably the early to mid 60s, but you know what? I have absolutely no idea. The number zero Stanley stamping didn't really point me in the right direction of anything. I do know these go much older. Now I've seen other variants, the 61, the 65, which had like multiple pins or uh, different level adjusters or a brass stopper. This doesn't have any of that. It's just a square all the way around. It does have a uh, sort of marking stamped on the back of it. 843847. Well, that didn't do anything for me either. 84-3847, well, that didn't turn up any Google results that pointed me in the right direction. Now, I have a more complicated engineer-style Mitutoyo depth gauge, but I don't think that serves the same purpose. This has got the large wooden stopper, which would indicate that this is a resting point for something, but I have no idea what. This guy here was the only gripping tool in the bunch, and it is, well, it's a no-name player's. Uh, says Forged Steel, but that's really it. Forged Steel USA, to be more specific, if you guys want to see the stamping that's on it there. Um, still does work. You can open and close it one hand. The action isn't all screwed up. Of course, got its gripping surface on the top here, and it does have a cutter on it. So you could uh, chop or strip some wire. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe you'd use it for fencing or for what. Of course, there's no padding or anything like that anywhere on the handle uh, and no other form of, of hallmark or maker's mark or anything like that. The forging, uh, not very good, to be honest with you. There's lots of imperfections. If you look in terms of the grip there, there's kind of a marking in the center that's very, very off to one side on each handle, so there was not a lot of QC, it's not sanded off or anything at all. Uh, of course, there's some rough areas all the way around the casting, casting, stamping, forging, whatever this is, on both sides. Uh, so, however old this tool is, it was probably not the highest of quality tools. It's definitely worn down, still works though, I mean, you could still use it. The action is not super satisfying, it feels kind of weird in your hands, it feels like it was made for, for smaller hands. Um, so who knows? Again, my guess on that would be 50s. Not super sure. There's no indication. Uh, but usually once you get much newer than the 60s, you start to see the foam and the dipped handles and stuff like that. Of course, you'd see branding on anything from any company that wanted to uh, get their name out there. The fit and everything, really not great. Those jaws, 
they do come to a point, but it's extremely uneven, uh, and the actual flat gripping surface is really only the very tip, so not the most useful thing on the planet there. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed a super quick look at two more tools in the box. That's four down and a bunch more to go, including all sorts of wrenches and homemade stuff coming in one of the new upcoming episodes. Uh, check back for that. Check back for lots of automotive content. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see. I don't usually do stuff on tools, but occasionally I will. So if you like this, definitely let me know. If you guys have any experience with any of these old tools featured in this video or any of the other videos, please leave it in the comments below or reach out on social media. I'll have it on the screen right now. As always, guys, thanks for watching.